Hello, hello. <laughs> See what I'm wearing? Wait, let me just put all the things down. I believe the previous podcast episode is just one week ago. Who am I? <laughs> so I was really excited and wanted to film another episode because since this podcast has kind of grown into being a progress report check, um, I wanted to show you because I made lots of progress. It is done. It is done. And I love the buttons. Oh, I didn't have enough buttons of a single color because I think I used, did I use eight buttons? Yes, eight buttons. Uh, I did not have eight buttons of the correct size and just one color. So um, yeah, I, I just went with it and I think it looks really good. Well, I think it looks really nice, really fun, and I made sure that the kind of brown buttons go with the brown yarn, and the teal buttons kind of go with the mint green. Well, you know, they don't match, but they go with it. And then there's a really light colored one here, and a darker one here. And I really like it. So yeah, this is the Saga cardigan by Wench Rowold and from Jabogarn Design. Uh, it was originally created for a much larger gauge on 5mm needles or so, but I knit it on 3mm needles uh, and apparently that scares some people. <laughs> but uh, I really like the fabric that it creates on 3mm needles. I like tight fabric. Um, I mean, uh, like a tight gauge. And yeah, I used Ba Ram Yu yarn in their Titus range, which has some, um, some British wool and some British alpaca. And yeah, it's just, it feels really nice. It isn't uh, dry yet. <laughs> this is me blocking it. You know, let me take you through my blocking process. So I put it in the bathtub and, and soak it through and through, squeeze out uh, as much water as I can, and then I put it in my spin dryer and I put this one in a, a little bag, you know, a wash bag, uh, so that it wouldn't stretch too much because it does have alpaca and alpaca does stretch. Uh, plus, I did not want the steak stitches, the steak seams uh, edges to unravel. Uh, which I think they will if you pull on it really hard. So, uh, so yeah, I made, made sure to put it in a wash bag uh, when I put it in a spin dryer. A spin dryer is kind of like, it does the centrifuge motion and it's a top loader, which means you, uh, it has a lid on the top and then you put it in. Uh, it's a really old fashioned thing and you can usually get them on secondhand websites. Um, yeah, and then it was, when, when I get stuff out of the spin dryer, it is practically dry. You can, you cannot squeeze it and get another drop out of it. Uh, and I figured, because when I tried it on before blocking, it was very tight around the arms. I know I have big arms, um, it's just, yeah, it's just what I have, but um, I, I don't think that I really took that into account. <laughs> while knitting and I especially did not think about perhaps wanting to wear something underneath it because it is a cardigan so uh yeah I need to think about that more next time so uh and because I think the fabric stretches more if it's still wet because you know you block it when it's wet so you stretch it when it's wet so I, I figured to just put it on and yeah it is still very tight um it has zero ease, maybe maybe negative ease around here. But I think it will be fine. I think it will be. And also because then I don't have to pin it down and I can just wear it and yeah. And 
I, I first had it on unbuttoned and I can show you but uh, it started curling inward a little bit which I know I can fix you know the pattern has you do another bit of knitting to cover this up um, which I think I might do or I might sew something on it uh, but it started like curling inward so I figured while I'm blocking the garment that it would be best to just uh, wear it buttoned but it's very cute unbuttoned as well very very pleased with it and mostly because I don't have a lot of knit cardigans I have three knit cardigans I think no four this is another one so this one which is very oversized and I don't really wear outside because it doesn't fit into my coat and I, I am not allowed to wear it downstairs because it has lots of mohair and it sheds a lot on the couch so this is my <laughs> my studio cardigan um, and then I have a cotton cardigan that I knit years ago um, it's uh, it's a miete miet by Andy Sutherland. Uh, Andy has taken her patterns down, which is very sad. I hope she will put them back up again. So it's Andy Sutherland from Untangling Knots. Uh, so yeah, I knit, uh, I knit a cotton cardigan, but I've grown to kind of not like cotton that much anymore. Um, plus it's in a color that I don't really like anymore. So I, I only wear that very rarely. Then I have a wool cardigan um, which is very tight around the arms so I tend not to wear it. Um, mostly also because it is a very scratchy fabric and it is a little bit too scratchy to wear on bare skin. So yeah, but I could wear it more. Um, and then I have the, uh, what's it called? I want to say B cardigan. M is it Melly? Melly cardigan, uh, which has kind of bat wings and also, uh, yeah, uh, there were some finishing issues because the button band on that keeps rolling over which is not fun. But then, so I have to button it at all times. Uh, otherwise it will just roll over but the button holes are kind of too small for the button so they kind of slip open the whole time uh, so yeah I don't really have a knit cardigan that I can just grab and will always fit me and always go with my outfit this will also not go with all outfits because you know this is very no <laughs> uh, but I do really really like it I will just not wear it with anything red I don't think um, uh, yeah I, I really like it uh, I would like to have more cardigans um, and yeah I don't really know which pattern to make and I don't think I'm confident enough to create my own cardigan pattern so if you have any favorite cardigan patterns please comment them down below and that brings me on to my next thing because I am so excited for more garments and <laughs> maniac look uh, yes I want to knit more garments so i'm gonna have a knit along or a make along because you can sew or crochet or whatever uh and we can make garments together so we are gonna have a garment along uh starting next week because i'm too excited and i can't wait any longer i have been working on so many secret projects and while they are super fun and super beautiful um you know because because it's something that I have to do it's just not fun to knit right uh, when when something when you have to do something it's it's not fun so I really want to just <laughs> knit for fun uh, and I'm hoping that you want to do that with me so whether you want to start a new garment or to finish some garments that you have um, on your needles 
uh, I'm all for it. Let's make along together. So I am thinking to do some YouTube live videos, perhaps once a week, uh, so that and it will kind of be like a stream. Um, well, it yeah, a live a stream. Yeah, that's kind of the same thing. But it will kind of uh, it will be very low key i won't be talking like this the whole time i will just be turning on the camera and knitting with you and then we can chat a little bit um you can chat all you want um i really like that but uh yeah so i'll just be going live on youtube and the idea is that you knit with me uh, and then we can cheer each other on if you're not um if you're not participating in the make along you can still come and chat and cheer us on um and we'll all just be dedicating that time to work on our projects and hopefully get them done sooner. And I am thinking to do a live video. I'm thinking Tuesday or Thursday and then in the morning. Um, just because I like to get a chunk of work done in the morning and then be energized the rest of the day. Hi, just interrupting because I want to ask if you are subscribed already to my channel. Below this video you can like the video and you can also subscribe to my channel. If you aren't yet, I would really really appreciate it if you click the button and if you're already subscribed. Thank you so much. Alright, let's continue. Uh, and I have two projects that I want to work on. So first, I'll show you the project that I want to finish, which is <laughs> this sweater. <laughs> wow, <laughs> almost done. No, um, this was a statement sweater that I wore. Uh, I had some really fun slogans on it, like wool is the future and uh, wool. No, yes, also wool, wool, wool. It's still on the sleeves right here. Uh, and knitwear care repair and I had a little sheep on the front and it was very very cute but because um, I don't want to just knit a statement sweater and then wear it once and never wear it again so I chopped off the statement panels which I have saved they're not unraveled um, and I want to make this into a sweater that I wear so I have bought some matching yarn to go with the sleeves and I'm going to use that for the body and uh, yeah I'm just going to finish the body first because then I can properly try it on because uh, and I will need to do some re reworking of the yoke as well um, because I just knit this just to get it over with you know i wanted to get it done before a certain craft fair uh so i did not really do any short rows so i want to get some more short rows in there to improve the comfort improve the fit so yeah and it's very fun no pattern sorry this is just for me <laughs> and uh yeah so that is a sweater that i'm going to work on hopefully finish. I wanted to say finish at the start, but I'm not going to. And then I am working on a, or I want to cast on a new project with this yarn. I have seven skeins of this, seven. Look how big it is. Seven skeins of this. So uh, it is very chunky yarn. I thought it was Erin, but maybe not. Um, and I want to knit this sweater, which is the Midori sweater by Rivive. Probably pronouncing that incorrectly. I'll put the name down below as well. So the Midori sweater, and it calls for Aran Wade yarn. And I think my yarn may be thicker because I knit a gauge swatch. Um, I had already knit a gauge swatch two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I got this, I got this at uh, a yarn sale um, and it was completely without a label. Um, but yeah, I did uh, check the fiber. Uh, I mean, just, just by washing my swatch, it has that typical sheepy smell. So I know that it is at least partly wool. But did you know? <laughs> 
and you know don't try this in your home but you can cut off a piece of yarn and burn it and then by the way it burns you can kind of see what it is uh, of course uh, all synthetic fibers will melt um, and wool or any other kind of animal fiber will um, it will smell like you know burnt hair if you blow dried for too long or you know you know burnt hair smell um, and plant fiber I'm not completely sure actually um, but yeah <laughs> I'm not completely sure so I'm not gonna say anything but uh, so this one I, I knew already from the smell when I washed it that it was a little uh, partly wool uh, but when I burned it I also saw bits that kind of melted into a ball like little little grains almost like grains of uh, sand but they were I think they were the plastic so it is I think partly wool partly acrylic which is fine for a sweater and um, oh now that I mention this actually I'm going to keep the swatch and wash it in the washing machine so that I can already test whether it is super wash right so I'm gonna test that um, but so I knit the swatch it's not completely dry yet uh, on five millimeter needles because that is what the pattern says and I have 13 stitches per 10 centimeters which is larger then the pattern calls for the pattern says 16 stitches so mine is uh, I wasn't able to squeeze those 16 stitches in 10 centimeters I only have 13 which means my gauge is wider which means if I'm gonna knit my size it's going to be much wider right so I'm going to calculate what to do um, and yeah I plan to just do that in the live videos for the knit along um so yeah i'm very excited about that i um uh, apologies if i say knit along because of course i mean make along everyone everyone can uh, practice their own craft but uh, i might still say knit along just because it's in my brain um yes so i'm excited for these two projects uh of course i have many more projects but for now I'm going to focus on this. I do not know yet uh, the exact day of the start of the knit along, of the make along, but uh, you can you can assemble your yarns. Uh, feel free to already cast on if you can't wait, uh, or you can wait until next Tuesday or Thursday when I do the live video. And you can cast on with me. Um, I don't know for how long the mal will be running, I don't know we will see <laughs> we will see um, so yeah I do plan to do one video a week let's see if I can do that um, so yeah I'm very excited about that so that is one cardigan finished this on the way and this one in planning and yes I actually still have some secret projects to finish so I'm going to continue working on that right now um, and uh, I still have to edit this but it might already be up before this video but I'm going to edit the sticking video uh, of this cardigan so keep an eye out for that one as well because uh, a lot of you have been waiting for that I'm sure so yeah um, I don't really know what else to say <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it here I will be back next week I'm not sure if I will do a podcast episode alongside the live video um, but we will see uh, in any case I will see you next week I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you then bye bye <laughs>